Welcome to July Asset News, like a top stories in crypto. Yeah, I'm bringing on a bite-sized pieces today. Just like the thumbnail suggests, there is one chart that is right 100% of the time, and it gave me hope for what's coming up next week with the Bitcoin ETF futures being launched. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that, that specific chart, which led me off into some other information I think is uh, pretty good. We'll take a look at some current data, take a look at the uh, CFTC response on the last uh, futures, which uh, was launched by the CBOE on December 17th, 2017. And then uh, moving forward, let's talk about the plan. So we'll go over all those things. But first, I need to make mention of this. Um, this was the thumbnail from yesterday's video. So I think um, hopefully when you clicked on this video, you are not a, uh, a thumbnail investor. A thumbnail investor will look at this and go, okay, this is bad and it's awful. I don't need to see the whole video. So when we talk about doing your own research, it's not just about looking at a thumbnail, it's about looking at the content inside it. And what we talked about yesterday was all true. There was a, a lot of danger, a lot of dangerous signs. We took a look at uh, Ricardo Salinas. He is the second richest man in Mexico, where he said that uh, when these futures launch, there'll be a lot of manipulation. Uh, we took a look at Dan Moorhead. Uh, he has, uh, he's the head of the Pantera um, uh, hedge fund, uh, which has billions of assets under management as far as cryptocurrency. He says, when this launches, please let me know so I can take some chips off of the table. And we took a look at 2017 and how everything just uh, dropped after the CBOE uh, launched the Bitcoin futures. And they also took a look at on April 14th or 15th, one of those two days, when um, Coinbase was launched uh, as far as on NASDAQ and everything just fell apart after that. So we, there was some, there's some valid points in that video and to me i'm like you know what there's a lot of danger signs so i'm not going to buy up as much as i possibly can in hopes that tomorrow it will go through i'm still very cautious but there was something that gave me a little bit of hope and that uh, is what i'm talking about today right now is the chart that gave me hope was the pi cycle top chart so if you haven't seen this i've been talking about it for a long time it's been right 100 percent of the time and let me just show you exactly what this is so pi cycle top it's when the, uh, see the little yellow line right there on the, on the lower left-hand corner in 2012? That's the 111-day moving average. And then the green line is the 350-day moving average times two. That doesn't really make a difference. All you got to know is that once the yellow line goes above the green line, you see tops. You see big tops as far as like Bitcoin goes. So if we're taking a look at this, it's been right 100% of the time. This was in 2013 it topped out and this was in the early 9th of april 2013 then you had a pretty big correction pretty big dip all back to eight man 86 bucks that's pretty good 200 to 86 dollars so that's pretty big uh pretty big loss over 50 percent right 60 percent or something like that and then it happened again in the same exact year in 2013 went all the way up to a thousand it's flipped over again and then a big dump and then a huge winter for quite some time until we got over here and this is what everybody knows. And this is an important date. December 17th, 2017. Remember that date. December 17th, 2017. That's when we topped out at, uh, gosh, what was it? 19,325, almost 20,000. And then we went into crypto winter. And then it was right again. It was right again, right around here. Get out of there. For, yeah, 22 of, 22nd of April. 20, 2021, when the Bitcoin price is around 63, almost 64,000, and then it went down. But if you can see right here, I need to really zoom in. That 111 day, it crossed over this way, but it immediately dipped back down, and now we're in this lower part. So just like when we see back here, after this uh, big top happened, it went way far below, it separated, almost came around here, separate again, and then up again, and we crossed over just for a small amount of time, and then it came down. So when I'm looking at this, I'm like, you know, that time frame in 2017, December 17, 2017, that was the exact date of the CBOE futures. And when I think about that, I'm like, maybe it was just due, and smart money's like, you know what, we're gonna show you guys what's up. And I think that is potentially what happened. So we'll take a look at a little bit deeper dive into that, but that's just one part. Um, I want to take a look real quick at some current data, which can kind of justify where my thinking is going uh, for right now. So uh, it is uh, Sunday, market caps are on two point, almost 2.5 trillion, not too shabby. Uh, Bitcoin daily sentiment, again, is kind of like me, neutral. I don't know exactly where exactly things are going, but here's where we're at. And uh, if we take a look at uh, the coins, Take a look here. Let me blow this up so you can see it. 
So we got uh, pretty much everything is down the last 24 hours. I mean, if we're looking at it, we've got uh, Bitcoin. I mean, not by much. 2% for Ethereum. It's just kind of like just a little pullback, which for a Sunday is pretty good. So the big question is what's going to happen Monday or Tuesday when everything launches. That would be the interesting part. So, okay. And then we take a look at uh, just a little TA, quick TA right now. Um, if we take a look at uh, the pattern, we can see that there's a lot of indecision that's going on. And as far as like the, the RSI, I actually, and I talked about this yesterday, is that I sold a little bit of, uh, of Bitcoin because I felt like it was, uh, it was about that time because the RSI was pretty high and I could see some little bit of changes in the MACD. It went from uh, dark green to light green. So I thought, okay, pretty good. So I sold just a little bit around 62,000, which is gonna help me fuel um, my investment for the, this property that, uh, that is coming up, an investment property, which they don't take Bitcoin. So what are you gonna do? And uh, I'm like, okay. And then we just kind of been in this pattern for a while and we, we're seeing red, little indecision. Okay, so nothing is really, there's no huge wicks all the way down. There's nothing like we can see as far as manipulation. This just looks like a basic pattern. And then we take a look at, uh, um, as far as on-chain analysis, uh, we take a look here is that uh, as far as uh, the miners, the Bitcoin miners, all the miners outflow, you know, miners, miners are not, I mean, they're not selling that much as, as compared to in the past. This purple line right here is all the Bitcoin miners selling. This is the price of Bitcoin. This is what they've sold so far. So, okay, we got there. And then as far as like the uh, uh, reserve, as far as like Bitcoin, all the exchange reserve, meaning that if if the exchange has a bunch of Bitcoin on it, they're going to have a pretty high reserve of Bitcoin, which is this purple line right here. And you can see uh, back in, what was this? Okay, let me see if I can blow that up. Oh, that's a little better. So we can see like right here, 16th October 2020, that's about a year ago. That is exactly a year ago. Uh, you've got a lot of uh, the exchanges holding on to Bitcoin because people were selling like crazy or they were transferring it to the exchanges so they could sell a bunch. And then uh, they sold... <clears throat> they sold off or they now they started to buy and now all the Bitcoin is coming off of the exchanges into the hands of people who are in cold storage. So that makes a lot of sense. And then over here, uh, this is what happened uh, back about a year ago. And uh, of course, they sold off. And now over here, uh, going into from September uh, all the way to around today, you see that it's a pretty darn low amount that is on the exchanges. What meaning is that if people aren't putting it into the exchanges, that means they're not planning on selling anytime soon. The same thing is even more pronounced uh, for Ethereum, because look at this, just went down, down, down. Uh, the exchanges don't have much at whatsoever. And then if we even take a look at uh, longs versus shorts, uh, this is uh, on bybt.com. We can take a look at all the, the different exchanges, BitMEX, all the way through uh, Bitfinex. And over the last 12 hours, pretty, pretty even, really, in honesty. It's, uh, you've got BitMEX here, almost, it's almost 50, but long, except for Bitfinex, 57% are going long. 42% for the shorts. That's the last 12 hours. If we take a look at the last 15 minutes or so, a little bit more different. Uh, we got a lot more people going into the shorts. Uh, let's see in the last, let's take a look at the last hour. What have we got? Eh, okay. So it looks like people are maybe shorting a little bit more. Last five minutes, we'll see. Eh, a lot of shorts. So pay attention to that. However, there is this, so that is really the data and where we're at right now. So it gives me a little bit of hope. I guess the shorts, but I mean, uh, you know, these traders, maybe they're just, uh, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people get liquidated. That's, that's really not uh, the big thing, but it's something to consider. But if I take a look at all this and take a look at the Pi cycle type, uh, Pi cycle top charts, we are pretty good as far as time frames go. However, there was a, and I was doing the, uh, the show with the guys, uh, George of Cryptos or us and James and the best answers. And we talked about, and actually George reminded me of this story. I forgot it was, uh, uh, Giancarlo, who was the uh, ex-head of the CFTC, uh, com uh, Commodities Future Trading Commission. And uh, he just talked about uh, the response on the last future. So what this was, and I thought it was pretty interesting to, to bring it up. Uh, Trump administration popped the 2017 Bitcoin bubble, ex-CFTC chair says. So... Uh, G Christopher, that's his name, Giancarlo, uh, U.S. Commodities Futures Trading Commission. Um, when he talked about this, this is an interview that he gave. When was this? October 22nd, 2019. And he said, look, he goes, um, as a reminder, the Bitcoin futures listed by the uh, CME, or the CBOE Futures Exchange, announced on December 1st, went live on December 18th. 
and Bitcoin's price peaked at nearly 20,000. And after that, it fell down to the floor, which is exactly what we saw in the Pi Cycle top chart. And I think a lot of people just saw it and like, hey, this this can't this can't continue over here. So we have to uh, maybe do a little bit uh, of of shorting, and that's exactly what happened. So he says, we saw a bubble building, and we thought the best way to address it was to allow the market to interact with it. Giancarlo cited research by San Francisco Fed Reserve that credits the introduction of Bitcoin futures for reigning in a market driven by optimists, you know, people like you and me. And uh, he says, without shorts, a market has no pessimists. If you do believe it's a ridiculous price, but you don't own, there's no way to express that view by shorting everything. And uh, he says, if you don't have it, that derivative, then all you've got are believers, and it's a believer's market. The CFTC staff handle it strictly on procedural grounds, but at a leadership level, I communicate with Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and NEC Director Gary Cohn, and we believe that should Bitcoin futures go forward, it would allow institutional money to bring discipline to the value of the cash market, and that's exactly what happened. So look, that's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell. They knew it was a bubble, and a lot of smart money knew it was a bubble because they said, there's no, it's just all optimism, hopes, and dreams. And that's exactly what I said about 2017. It was all white paper, hopes, and dreams, and unicorns. That was really what uh, everything was built on. There was no working product. There was no real great team behind anything as far as the ICOs and just kind of fell away. And that's a great lesson to remember. But in this situation, I think it's a little bit different. If we look at the other data points about the different uh, treasuries that are out there that have you know, all the different uh, uh, Bitcoin in their possession. I mean, they've got a lot of, of, of Bitcoin. So when we take a look at, at, at that, uh, we can t say to ourselves, well, that looks pretty good. I mean, as far as like what actually it has, and let me just pull this up uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, right here. So like for ETFs and countries and public companies and private companies, remember that's ETFs throughout the globe, you got a total of 7% uh, that holds Bitcoin. And then as far as public companies, uh, this then just breaks it down. 1%, 1 1.2 for, 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 for uh, governments, 0 0.82 and ETFs on Bitcoin, 3.88%. So again, it's not like back in the day when nobody was really into it. There was no discipline. Now we have futures and now we have the ability to short it. We just saw that. Now we have all these things going on. But it leads me to my to my thought process, which is, Sometimes things are just a self-fulfilling prophecy. So right now, would I go all in and buy a bunch of Bitcoin? No. Would I sell all my Bitcoin? No. What I did was I peeled off a little bit of profits because I wasn't 100% sure. And uh, that's, for me, that's my goals. My goals are not your goals, right? So if I take a little bit of profits and it uh, didn't, didn't work out, maybe, I don't know, we 3x in two days. It's not gonna happen. But let's just say it does. Let's say a 3x, I'm okay because the vast, vast majority is still in Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin goes up, the altcoins will go up. Which leads me to my last point, which is this. Uh, the plan is just what I talked about. I'm just gonna sit back and let this week play out and see exactly what happens. If uh, if it doesn't you know, work out too great as far as like, what if it does 2X? That's good, because the money that I took out, I'm putting into other assets called real estate. So I'm okay with that. It's not just sitting there in cash. And then I just have to say that, you know, I still believe in the four-year cycles, you know, 2016, 2017, 18, 19. I still believe that uh, this is going to be a massive run. I don't know if it's going to play out like uh, how it did in 2017, 18, 19, where it was an extended bull or bear market. I think maybe we might see things extended into January or February, maybe March. I, don't, I probably won't uh, take it out that far because I remember, I always remember this quote, one of the Rothschilds said, I made all my money by not selling at the top and not buying uh, at the at the absolute bottom. Meaning I can never time the market correctly and perfectly because I'm not Nostradamus. And then I still have, you know, my price predictions. I still think we're going there. Bitcoin around 150K, Ethereum 10K, Chainlink's already hit it, Cardano, $3. I think it might even go even higher than that. And then for other ones uh, that we have like uh, Stormax and T-Fuel and, and Solana, I still think it's gonna go pretty high. So look, I still think things are gonna do pretty well. I still have my plan as far as like cashing out and the alternatives there. And we've talked about that as far as like cash and USDC and land and property, my Amazon business, staking, uh, I trust crypto IRA. And if you're looking for uh, ways to uh, minimize taxes, that's what I have. I've had it now for two years. And 
Works out pretty great. I'm not going to pay a dime once I cash out of all that Bitcoin, Ethereum. They've got a ton of different cryptos now. And also they have uh, metals, gold and silver, which I also invest into. So all these things and then my cash out plan or my exit strategy is still right there. It's still pretty much the same. Uh, I'm not going to change too much. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully I don't get a bunch of... Uh, <laughs> of uh, thumbnail uh, investors, but they, just, they, they see both of these these thumbnails and they go, ah, see, gotcha. You said it was it was bad yesterday and you said today it's good, so you're just a shill. Well, I'm king of the shill, so sure. But in all honesty, um, hopefully you've watched this all the way to the end. You can make the best decision for you. Again, your goal is not my goals. All right, so that's it. So look, if you enjoyed that video, found a little value, give it a thumbs up. Always consider subscribing. A lot of things to talk about, especially right now, are super time sensitive. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.